Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about some big storms with a very hot week ahead as tropical trouble is brewing that looks to have U.S. impacts by this weekend. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is the overall hazard map for this morning, August the 9th. And man, we've got excessive heat watches coming back for the Pacific Northwest. These start Wednesday afternoon going into Saturday evening. We've got uh, record breaking temperatures happening. They're gonna be happening all, all over much of the Pacific Northwest with those uh, triple digit temperatures returning if not 105 at times and that's why they have the excessive heat watches in place for northern parts of california uh in, uh, in and around uh, oregon as well as uh, washington we've got some red flag warnings down here into uh, wyoming but we also have the heat advisories coming back for the midsection of the country where we've got those elevated dew points and these are going to be in the 105 plus range as well for a good chunk of the middle middle of the country now let's take a look at the tropics as well because man we got a lot happening down there let me t give you an overall depiction on how i think this week's going to play out we've got these systems coming along coming up the, on our northern interiors that's going to be our setup for our severe weather that we'll talk about over the coming days and back behind it there's we got that drier air filtering in and we've got the heat surge and that's where we're going to bring those triple digit temperatures uh, for much of the pacific northwest down here into the tropics there is tropical storm kevin and then we also have another storm that looks to form and that will be linda and then we also have our 95 l that looks to get starting to get in its act together we also have another disturbance back here and then we also have a tropical wave that's coming off the coast of africa so I think what's going to happen is here is our Invest 94L. I think it starts to tries to get its act together over the next, uh, you know, one to two days. This will continue moving west northwest. It's going to be impacting going over Puerto Rico, uh, getting into the Turks and Caicos area, eventually in the Bahamas. But a lot of the guidance has it in and around uh, Florida by this weekend. We also have that other disturbance back by here. That looks to have a lot of uh, uh, African dust that's coming off the coast here. I think that actually gets eaten and goes away. And then we also have Linda that's going to be really getting its act together and probably going to be a storm, if not a hurricane, very soon. So as this system comes up, moves west, northwest, and as Linda potentially gets stronger, it's actually going to help increase the monsoon. But it's also could bring some shear over into the Gulf of Mexico towards the Caribbean that also could uh, kind of inhibit, uh, you know, our 95L, which could be Tropical Storm Fred. There's also a lot of the Saharan dust back behind it. So it's got three features it's going to have to be working with. It's got a lot of Saharan dust. It's going to be integrated and wrapped up into the system. And then it's got a lot of land interaction and top topography that's going to be going over as well. And then we potentially have some shear uh, from but what would be Linda uh, out ahead of it. So yeah, by the time it gets into Florida, yes, it's probably going to be a tropical storm, but a lot of the guidance has it kind of keeping at bay because of those three features uh, that might be uh, ingested from this system. But for now, it's going to be a heavy rainmaker and potentially, you know, tropical storm force conditions by the time we get into the day on, on this weekend. But I think what's really going to happen here that a lot, that you see a lot with tropical systems, this system right here that's just now coming off the coast of Africa, this is probably going to be 95L, okay? Now, what's going to happen is this would be potentially Fred. This is what they like, kind of kind of clears the runway, so to speak. And leaving behind, this would actually take all the dust with it and everything and leaving more like a clearer path for what will be 95L that's just now coming off the coast of Africa. But so by the time this gets into this environment, it's, it, it, it comes off the coast a little bit further uh, south and it doesn't get ingested into the Saharan dust. So this, this would continue uh, moving along westbound and a lot of the guidance has this taken into the Caribbean and this could be uh, another big troublemaker. This would be way well, well down the line, but this could end up being our main story, uh, you know, potentially after what will be coming uh, Fred. So 
Now let's take a look at this. So here's the uh, the Pacific. There is that tropical storm, Kevin, and there's what will be uh, Linda. It's already got a 90% chance of developing. Uh, so this is actually helping the monsoon. Linda will actually help the monsoon even further as this intensifies. But I do feel that this actually is intensifies it would bring some shear off, off into the Caribbean and get it into the Gulf of Mexico as well. And there's our there's our systems in the Atlantic. Uh, the National Hurricane Center has up to, to a 70% probability of this forming into a tropical depression or a tropical storm over the next 48 hours. And as you can see, this would continue uh, west, northwest bound. There's the Lesser Antilles, there's Puerto Rico, there's Jamaica, and there's uh, the Dominican Republic and Cuba, and then getting into, uh, you know, getting near Florida. So you, you you see the path of what Elsa took. This is not actually that far off of what uh, what Elsa took. And you saw what it, what uh, Elsa went through with a lot of land interaction along the way. So we'll, we'll just have to watch this system. This system's down to 20%. And like I mentioned, that's going to be ingested. That's going to be actually going to be fizzling out and not going to be a player uh, for what's to come. And then eventually we'll have to look out the coast of Africa for that what will be, I think, a bigger story down the line from uh, this invest, which would be 95L. So let's zoom in to happening what's happening towards the United States as far as today. This is your Monday map. And like I mentioned, we've got these boundaries setting across up on the Northern interior with our zonal flow. We'll have the South wind creeping back in. That's why we have those heat advisories coming back into play. It's, it warms up in a big way for much of the South. All the action is going to be well to the north along this boundary. So we've got some stronger storms to contend with and portions of uh, North Dakota getting into portions of uh, Minnesota today. And that will extend into uh, portions of South Dakota as well as this will continue uh, traversing across. These are just more or less heat uh, daytime heating heat driven thunderstorms uh, during the day and more of an isolated type of nature and not very widespread at all. But as we continue the day on that Tuesday, I do feel that's going to be our main severe threat with a good chunk of the country, a uh, good chunk of the uh, upper upper Midwest, upper Ohio Valley getting getting uh, inundated with some very uh, high winds and uh, heavier, heavier thunderstorms. Let me take a look at the overall uh, storm prediction center map. So, yes, yeah, some of these storms could be uh, strong to severe with those high winds, damaging winds, downburst winds. Uh, the main setup with this is going to be your wind threat, then the hell threat. It's it's a very isolated threat. It's not that's not going to be the main threat with this system. It's just going to be really the stronger winds because there's going to be a lot of heat that's going to be associated with this. And a lot of times you get with this called those downbursts with that type of situation. And that's what we're going to be seeing as these storms race across uh, throughout the day. So in, in and around the Chicago area, Detroit, getting into Indianapolis, uh, Milwaukee, as well as uh, Cleveland, Ohio, those uh, areas will be under the gun for some of those uh, stronger to severe thunderstorms as these would continue uh, moving across and more or less weakening as they get into the, to uh, Columbus and to Nashville and to uh, Omaha and out towards uh, Pittsburgh. Going on to the, going into the day on a Tuesday, we do try to sneak with that monsoon flow some at least isolated rain showers trying to creep into extreme southern portions of south uh, south uh, southern uh, California as well. So that you know they desperately need the rain out there. So we'll take any chance we get of uh, of any type of isolated type at, you know storm that could be popping up in that neck of the woods but at least there's an opportunity or a chance coming up on the day on a tuesday there's your setup for wednesday that boundary will con continue to move, uh, be across the northern interior as as the really warm surge hot surge record breaking surge temperatures start to uh, creep back in and start to really build and intensify as we go through wednesday Thursday, Friday time frame, but underneath we've got those daytime heating driven thunderstorms and there's Kevin keeping the monsoon flow alive and then we'll have Linda developing to reinforce that as we go deeper in the week. So let's take a look at your wind swath over the next couple of days where those, those bigger storms could fly. And yeah, we're talking some of these wind gusts could be upwards to 40, 50. And then sometimes when they do turn severe, upwards to 60 mile per hour is not out of the question. And some some may max out at upwards to 70 plus is not out of the question with these type setups 
especially in around the northern interior of uh, Illinois, northern Ohio, you know, getting into portions of, uh, you know, uh, Michigan here some of those some of those storms <clears throat> could be higher wind gusts with with these as these as they move across but there's your dew points as we go into that Wednesday like I mentioned I mean that's where the heat advisories are going to be dominating for much of the country we've got a lot of drier air filtered in uh, so man it's just going to be a, a soupy mess down here for much of the south with heat with uh, dew points well into the 70s 75 and that's why it's going to feel like just extremely muggy outside and that's why they have those heat advisories so definitely take all the precautions necessary it's going to be a it's going to be a hot week i mean there's no question about it it's definitely going to be a hot week ahead i mean here's some of the temperatures i mean you know historically august is your hottest month i mean it's already the hottest month and so when you're looking at anomalies approaching you know 25 uppers to 27 degrees above average i mean that's that's some brutal stuff and that's where the triple digits are going to be flying but look i mean there's hardly anything that's going to be below average for much of the country i mean your average high in dallas is 97 so you know five to six degrees above that that's easily triple digits so and then you add the heat index on top of that i mean that's that's 105 108 110 range that's some brutal stuff i mean you know so that's a good chunk of the country is going to be very hot and very warm so it's just going to be taking uh you know all the precautions necessary and limit your activity outdoors uh because between those you know really those high temperature hours from say noon to, to five o'clock in the afternoon that's where it can really uh, be intense so definitely try to limit your uh, outdoor activity uh, during those times there's the rain where what will be flying on wednesday not much because it's under that ridge of high pressure the only games in town as the storms kind of subside or here's that here's kevin off the coast and there's what will be linda see linda's already coming into play here as it's it's it's, it's pulling in some of that moisture and feeding it back into the monsoon and to southern portions of arizona and new mexico and trying to creep into southern portions of south uh, southern uh, california as well as these uh, daytime heating driven thunderstorms and you can see the instability by wednesday where that the where that invest would probably be uh with what would be potentially fred there's there's the anomalies by the time we get into that thursday time frame still still record breaking heat out here in the pacific northwest we try to get some cooler air uh trying to filter in uh by then but this is not going to be much it's going to take some take some take some time uh, to filter in for much much of the week as this is a slow push as the dominant uh, heat will will still be uh, in force for much of the country uh there's your rain for thursday again under that ridge of high pressure not much happening the monsoon stays alive as we'll we'll start to watch that invest 94l uh, start to get a little bit closer as a lot a lot of the instability will be along the coastal coastal regions from the southeast uh to the northeast with that rain uh as the system moves across from west to east uh, there's your high temperatures on Friday with your anomalies. Again, brutal heat. So you're talking three days in a row, uh, back to back to back, a triple digits possibly in the Pacific Northwest for a good chunk of uh, Northern California, Oregon, Washington, bleeding into Idaho and Montana as well. So that's a that's going to be your uh, setup for that extreme heat that's going to be on the table and well above average temperature anomalies. And then even in the Northeast, I mean, you're talking still highs in the uh, lower 90s, mid 90s. So uh, it's it's not going to be cool anywhere really in the country for much of the week. Uh, as we go deeper into getting into the weekend, we'll start to look further south. I mean, there's Kevin kind of petering out. There's Linda really starting to come and play. You can almost see an eye already. So that's going to be a formidable storm out here, not really impacting land indirect uh, directly, but in, it'll have his indirect uh, approaches and impacts as this storm you know pulls in the gulf moisture from from the pacific bleeding into that monsoon and this would probably be, be a factor for what will be uh maybe potentially fred uh by then at uh, this is nearing the bahamas and, and nearing uh, the coast of florida because by the time we get into uh saturday time frame 
There's your tropical moisture. This is your uh, precipital water content. Uh, yeah, that's some very heavy rain. So if at, at the very least, this is going to be a major rain rainmaker for Florida. I mean, it could be more. This is still five, six days out. So there's still a lot could happen. This is starting to starting to show signs of getting a low level spin, you know, currently as we're doing this video. So it's not out of the question. We be, could be talking. We have Fred on the table by the time we get into that uh, that Wednesday time frame, be talking about a storm and having an ultimate track from the from the National Hurricane Center. So but there's your rain prospects for the next week. Uh, again, under that ridge of high pressure, not much happening with that sinking air, very dry conditions. There's your monsoon flow will be impacting uh, parts of uh, Arizona and New Mexico. There's your heavier storms will leave in the, the heavier rains and to uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, parts of Kentucky, West Virginia, into, ten into the Tennessee Valley as well. And then we'll have our main player down to the south as what will be our Invest 94, uh, Tropical Storm Fred potentially by then with some very heavy rain, uh, if not more, uh, for, for, a good, for a good chunk of Florida. So definitely Florida is going to have to look out uh, for what will be uh, become with Fred as we go deeper uh, into the week. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.